This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We start tonight with a breaking news update on a search in southeast Missouri. Yesterday, we told you crews were searching a rural property in Bollinger County. In the last 15 minutes, Missouri State Highway Patrol confirms the search is connected to the disappearance of Gina Dawn Brooks. She disappeared in 1989 when she was 13 years old riding her bike. We're told evidence was collected during the search and is now undergoing analysis. Officials did not say what type of evidence they found. We do know no human remains were located. Several agencies, including the FBI, are investigating. Tonight, a St. Louis man is waiting for his release after his overturned conviction was stalled by the Missouri Supreme Court. Now his legal team works quickly to see what's next for Christopher Dunn. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Christopher Dunn was ready to walk out of prison after being behind bars for 34 years until the state's highest court intervened at the Attorney General's request. Our Justina Coronel spoke to experts about the legal roller coaster that's unfolding, Justina. Well, I spoke to Kenya Brunfield Young, a St. Louis University criminology professor who's worked on this case closely. She actually spoke to Christopher Dunn this morning. He said he's still processing all of this, but he's optimistic. Now, just 24 hours ago, an emergency hearing was held after the attorney general appealed a judge's decision to release Dunn. Now, the judge ordered him to be let go. However, the Missouri Supreme Court got involved this time because the AG asked for more time. Now, Dunn's attorneys are filing a response by tomorrow, and the AG has until Monday. Dunn was convicted of killing a 15-year-old in North St. Louis City in 1990. And after more than 30 years in prison, a judge decided this week that Dunn should immediately be discharged from custody after seeing there was a clear showing of innocence. Now, the SLU criminology professor explains why the AG may be standing in the way. They argue because they do believe that uh, justice was served that the case concluded the way that, you know, constitutionally, and then unless there are any constitutional errors, that there's no way that we can go back and unwind something based on either newer evidence or things like that. Now, I've reached out to the AG's office several times for comment and to explain his reasoning why he continues to solve this case and others despite a judge's decision. We haven't heard back. Tonight, the St. Louis Archdiocese is accused of covering up abuse. 25 plaintiffs filed a lawsuit and are asking for a jury trial. Five Your Size Tracy Henson attended a demonstration held by victims this afternoon. She has details on the lawsuit, Tracy. So, Kelly, I reached out to the Archdiocese communication teams twice today, asking for a statement or an interview in response to the allegations, but I have not heard back. The lawsuit filed yesterday is massive, listing numerous victims and their alleged abusers. Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky is at the top of that list, named as a defendant. The lawsuit saying, quote, this shameless cover-up spanned decades and allowed various clergy and other employees to access and sexually abuse numerous children. Susan Hurt is not part of this lawsuit, but is supporting all 25 plaintiffs as a volunteer for SNAP, the survivor's network of those abused by priests. She shares in their pain as she was abused in 2021 by a priest in West County. Really, I think this individual is a problematic individual. Okay, so he had problems, and my feeling is it's up to his superiors to do the right thing. Now, the priest in Susan's case was moved to a different parish after she came forward to authorities. She echoed many themes in the lawsuit of concealment, exploitation, and the movement of problematic priests from one parish to another. Attorneys for the co-owner of Bar PM and the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office appeared in court today. Chad Morris was arrested last year after St. Louis police officers crashed their SUV into his bar. Morris was arrested for allegedly getting into a physical altercation with an officer. He says police took him into custody without probable cause. And last week, his lawyer filed a motion for a judge to either sanction the circuit attorney's office or drop the case. The prosecutor's office is still not giving us evidence about, about the officer who's been accused now four times of abusing citizens. Why are we here? You know, we'll be into the, our eighth month of this. And if this case isn't dismissed, you know, we might not have a trial till the end of this year. So this has been terrible. Today, the judge said the circuit attorney's office has until 5 p.m. tomorrow to file a brief with evidence. There's another court hearing next Thursday.
In less than two hours, you'll see two top GOP candidates running for governor debate right here on Five on Your Side. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is here with a preview of the only televised debate in the 2024 Republican primary race. Hey, Kelly and Mike, debates can make or break big campaigns. Just look back at President Biden's debate performance. These made-for-TV moments can reveal a candidate's character, they can expose the substance of their ideas, or it can just provide a clear contrast between candidates. Full disclosure, one candidate didn't show up. You see that empty podium? It was for Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, but instead he took his campaign bus to a small town of 195 people last night. Senator Bill Eigel and Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft took turns highlighting Kehoe's absence on that statewide stage. Both men have been competing for the right wing of the GOP base. Perhaps one reason why Ashcroft unloaded on Eigel, trying to tie him to Kehoe and against Donald Trump. My, my colleague here calls uh, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe a Democrat when he voted the same way as he did 89.2% of the time. They have both, both voted for massive increases in the gas tax. Uh, they've both been against the initiative petition reform. They've both voted to allow foreign entities to buy land in our state. And I would not be proud of all the small dollar donations I got when it turns out that they were from scamming Trump donors who thought they were donating to President Trump when in fact it was going to Senator Eigel. And in fact, President Trump had to send him a cease and desist letter because of what he was doing to the MAGA movement. We'll give you a sneak peek of Senator Eigel's remarks tonight at 6. You can probably tell tonight's debate won't be live. That was our plan last night. Then President Biden delivered his address to the nation, so we had to tape it. You'll see the whole thing tonight at 7. And again, you can watch that debate at 7 o'clock right here on 5 on your side, but you can also see it on the 5 Plus app. Right now, the Fox C6 school district is facing a major challenge for the upcoming school year. Heavy rains in Arnold and Imperial from a couple of weeks ago lifted the turf on the Fox and Seckman High School football fields. Now the fields are not playable and both stadiums are shut down. A district spokesperson says the goal is to play games sometime later this fall, but they're not sure when. The head football coach is encouraging students to stay positive. There's always concerns, you know, hey, hey coach, you know, we're we going to have any home games this year. Do you know what's going on? And, and, and really that's something that we don't have information on right now. And it's something that, uh, you know, I tell them all the time, worry about the things you can do, focus on the things you can't control. And, and that's what we've been doing out of camp. District leaders say they're looking at more than $500,000 a piece to replace the turf on both fields. More endorsements for Vice President Kamala Harris, the major one that could be coming from a high profile Democrat. President Biden met with Israel's prime minister today in D.C. What they had to say about the war in Gaza. The opening ceremony for the Paris Olympics is tomorrow. One-way athletes are finding their motivation and drive.